Good day, everybody. Welcome to our dissection of the posterior compartment of the leg. I'm Dr. Sanjay Sanyal, Professor Department Chair. First, we will describe the muscles which are in the superficial compartment of the posterior compartment of the leg. So the muscle that we see in front of us, this is the gastrocnemius. It's got two bellies, the medial head and the lateral head. The cadaver is prone and this is the left leg. So this is the medial, this is the lateral, this is the superior, this is the inferior. The medial belly is slightly bigger than the lateral belly. And the medial belly takes origin from the posterior surface of the, the medial condyle of the femur. The lateral belly takes origin from the posterior surface of the lateral condyle of the femur. If you notice, the outer portions are more tendinous and the inner portions are more fleshy. The two bellies then unite and somewhere in the middle of the muscle, they become a flat aponeurotic band. And this aponeurotic band, as it continues down, it merges with the tendon of the soleus, which I'm going to mention next, and they form this tendon, this strong, tough tendon, which is called the tendo Achilles or the tendo calcaneus. The medial belly, as I told you, is slightly bigger, and this has got maximum clinical correlations. For example, it's the medial belly, where the popliteal artery runs very close to the medial and the medial belly is the one which can produce compression of the popliteal artery in the condition known as popliteal artery entrapment syndrome. The medial belly is the one which quite often snaps during excessive strain and it produces a very painful condition of the calf. I made an incision here around the aponeurosis to reflect the medial belly and the lateral belly of the gastrocnemius. And we immediately see the next soleus muscle, which is the third component of the triceps surae. The two heads of the gastrocnemius and the soleus together constitute the triceps surae. Soleus comes from the word flatfish because it is like a flatfish. And we can see straight away that the attachment of the soleus is like an inverted U. Laterally, it is attached to the posterior surface of the fibula and medially it is attached to the posterior surface of the tibia and these are respectively referred to as the soleal lines. And between the fibula and the tibia there is a gap. And this gap is bridged by a fibrous structure, which is referred to as the tendinous arch of soleus. And under this tendinous arch of soleus, we have the popliteal structures entering. The gastrocnemius and the soleus tendons, they fuse somewhere in the middle, and they form this thick, strong, tough tendon, which is known as the tendocalcaneus. So what is the difference between the gastrocnemius and the soleus components of the triceps surae? The gastrocnemius is for running, jumping, sprinting, because it is type 2 white, easily fatigable, quick muscle. And the soleus is for strolling. It is type 1, red, postural, slow, not easily fatigable muscle. And the two therefore have different functions. Another important functional aspect is that the gastrocnemius, it takes origin from the femoral condyles and it gets inserted through the tendocalcaneus onto the uh, calcaneus. So therefore, the gastrocnemius acts on two joints. It acts on the knee joint and it acts on the ankle joint. So therefore, gastrocnemius is a two-joint muscle. In contrast, the soleus is only a single-joint muscle. So that brings us to an important point. The gastrocnemius can flex the knee joint, while both gastrocnemius and soleus together are the most powerful plantar flexors of the ankle joint through the tendocalcaneus. However, because the gastrocnemius is crossing the knee joint, it cannot flex the knee joint and plantar flex the ankle joints to the fullest extent together. Therefore, if the knee is fully flexed, then the gastrocnemius cannot plantar flex. Okay, that is about the functional aspect of it. So we have reflected the gastrocnemius and we look under the lateral head of the gastrocnemius, we see yet one more muscle. We can see that muscle from outside above the lateral head of the gastrocnemius and once we lift it up we can see the same muscle under that also and this muscle that you see here this is the plantaris muscle the plantaris muscle takes attachment from the lateral condyle of the femur above the lateral head of the gastrocnemius and it goes inside between the two heads and then it forms immediately forms a long thin tendon and this tendon runs between the gastrocnemius and the soleus it runs from lateral to medial and it merges with the tendocalcaneus. This plantaris tendon does not have much functional importance, but it has got some many anecdotal references and it has got some surgical use. First of all, this is used for tendon transplant. Secondly, 
This tendon can sometimes rupture during excessive use of the calf muscle and it can produce again a very painful condition of the calf. And thirdly, this is also referred very facetiously, it is referred to as the fresh man's nerve because when dissecting the junior residents or the surgical residents sometimes mistake this tendon for the tibial nerve. That's why it is also referred to as a fresh man's nerve because it looks very much like a nerve. So this is about the plantaris. So these are the, some of the aspects about the gastrocnemius and the soleus. These together constitute the triceps sure. Mind you, the plantar is not, is not included in the triceps sure. Now let me mention about the tendocalcaneus itself. The tendocalcaneus is arguably the most powerful tendon in the human body. And it is the most powerful plantar flexor. It starts from somewhere in the middle of the calf. First it starts as an aponeurotic sheet and then it rapidly becomes a very strong, powerful tendon. And we can feel the tendon on the back of our heel. As the fibers descend down, if you look very closely, you'll find that the turning fibers are turning laterally. The fibers which are superficial, they are now lateral. And the fibers which are deep coming from the soleus, they are more medial. Therefore, as the tendocalcaneus descends down, the fibers twist 90 degrees laterally. Such that the fibers which are coming from the gastrocnemius, they are pointing laterally. And the fibers which are coming from the soleus are pointing medially. This 90 degree twist is supposed to give extra springiness to the movements of the foot and the gait. Tendocalcaneus is such an important tendon that if it is ruptured, then it is almost as bad as the foot getting cut. So therefore, it has to be repaired. And the procedure for repairing it is what is known as Z-plasty. And that is what I have done when I was Cutting the, the calcaneus tendon, I have cut it in the form of a transfer, small transverse limb, a vertical limb, and again a transverse limb on the opposite side. So when we are repairing it, we do not repair it end to end. We repair it like a Z plasty. By so doing, we ensure that the force, the traction, is distributed. Otherwise, it will rupture again. It is done about one inch above the calcaneus it is inserted and then of course we have to repair the paratenon and I have cut a portion of the paratenon here to show the thin membrane which covers every tendon that is called the paratenon and the tendocalcaneus when it is inserted onto the back of the calcaneus there is a bursa under that which is known as a subtendinous bursa and there is also a bursa on the surface of the calcaneus which is known as a subcutaneous bursa both of these can be inflamed especially when we are wearing tight new shoes so this is about the tendocalcaneus, its clinical importance and its functional use. So this is about the superficial muscles of the posterior compartment of the leg. Thank you very much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. If you have any questions or comments, put them in the comment section below. Dr. Sanjay Sanyal signing out. Have a nice day. Like the video and make sure to subscribe.